The US Army has successfully fielded its first long-range hypersonic weapon LRHW, system to practice a full range of expeditionary hypersonic launch capabilities. A weapon is touted to be hypersonic if it exceeds speeds of Mach 5, which is five times the speed of sound. This is about 1,715 meters per second or 3,836 miles per hour or 6,174 kilometers per hour. The weapon system was deployed by the 1st Multi-Domain Task Force, 1st MDTF, Long Range Fires Battalion, 5th Battalion and 3rd Field Artillery Regiment, 5-3 LRFB. As part of the exercise Thunderbolt Strike, it was fielded more than 3,100 miles or about 4,990 kilometers away from the Joint Base lewis mccord in Washington to Cape Canaveral in Florida. Idea was that the soldiers would be able to practice with LRHW system through a series of drills during the exercise. In this video, Defense Updates analyzes why the first ever deployment of LRHW is a major step. Let's get started. LRHW consists of a prototype ballistic missile an all-up round or AUR. As portrayed, the missile is encased in a canister. The missile has a diameter of 34 and a half inches. To give viewers a perspective, a Tomahawk cruise missile has a diameter of about 20 inches. The missile has a common hypersonic glide body CHGB, placed on top of it. It is developed by Sandia National Laboratory and the CHGB will be used by the Army Navy and Air Force. Viewers may note that the CHGB is probably based on the Army Hypersonic Weapon or AHW. A boost glide vehicle, the AHW, was tested in 2011 and achieved a speed of Mach 8 and a range of almost 4,000 miles or 6,437 kilometers. The TELS or Transporter Erector Launchers are the modified M983A4 Heavy Expanded Mobility Tactical Trunks Hemped M983A4 is currently being used in Patriot Anti-Aircraft Missile System. An M890 trailer will be used to move the tail. AFTDS or Advanced Field Artillery Tactical Data System version 7.0 will be present for battle management duties. Each TEL will have two missile canisters. Thunderbolt Strike marks a new milestone between the first MDTF RCCTO, industry and numerous Army partners that generated immediate feedback from stakeholders on the complex system. Colonel Ian Humphrey, RCCTO's Hypersonic Weapon Integration Project Manager, pointed to first MDTF's rapid progress in building the technical and procedural capacity to integrate the LRHW system's capabilities into the Defense Department's joint force. This unit is fully trained and has proven that they can be deployed away from home station and go right into whatever mission they are given. He added, our soldiers processed real missions with real data in real time to produce real effects to learn lessons and generate readiness. We are training the way we will fight and our soldiers are ready to deploy and employ this critical capability forward. Harrington said, Thunderbolt Strike proved the power of interagency cooperation to build the multi-domain force of the future. The second half of the Army's year of long-range precision fires will continue to represent groundbreaking strides toward integrated deterrence in the Pacific. Viewers may note that a 12th of January 2023 report by the Congressional Research Service said the service has planned to field a prototype LRHW battery in fiscal year or FY 2023. After this deployment, the U.S. Army intends to transition into a formal program of record and implement the second and third batteries in FY 2025 and FY 2027. 
In addition, technology insertions to upgrade the CHGB are to take place in FY 2026 and FY 2027. Nowadays, there are air defense systems that can intercept incoming subsonic or supersonic weapons reasonably reliably. The extreme speed of hypersonic weapons and the ability to fly in unpredictable paths give them a much high probability of penetrating modern air defenses. They'll be very hard to track, let alone intercept. There are three methods being applied to make hypersonic weapons. One using a scramjet engine like the Russian Zircon missile, two, through the use of a hypersonic glide vehicle, or HGV. Examples of these are the Chinese DFZF, Russian Avantgarde, and American CPS and LRHW. Three, using ALBM, or air-launched ballistic missile, like Russian Kinzhal, which has been used by Russia against Ukraine. For some time, the American military was undecided when it comes to developing and deploying hypersonic weapons. This led to the U.S. military lagging in this technology. Just a few days ago, U.S. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall confirmed that U.S. air-launched hypersonic missile was not successful. He said at a congressional hearing, Those tests that we just conducted were not successful. We did not receive data from the tests that we needed. The test was conducted on March 13th when an AGM-183 ARRW missile was fired from a B-52H strategic bomber off the coast of California. In this situation, the positive news regarding LRHW is an excellent morale booster. In her keynote address at the 2021 annual meeting and exposition of the Association of the United States Army, Secretary of the Army Christine Warmoth predicted that Fiscal year 23 will be the year of long-range precision fires. The U.S. military is pursuing nine programs that are dedicated to fielding hypersonic weapons. There's no doubt that hypersonic weapons will play a key part in future battles, and it remains to be seen if the U.S. can bridge the gap. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting, and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.